the fact that he was a heroin addict. Oh, yeah. And Doc, I like to think that I am empathetic. Yeah. I like to think I'm non judgmental. Yeah, yeah. I would have a real hard time checking that box if it was, in fact, on the ballot, because I think to myself, like, how do I know he doesn't crack under pressure? Yeah. Can't have that in the oval. So, right off the bat, I guess I do have a bias. I'm ashamed of it, yeah. but I want to put it out there. And I imagine that it's not just about RFK Jr. It's obviously got to play out with other people who struggle with addiction. Okay. So, in terms of being hired for jobs and things. And, and he said, so I pulled some things that he said that I wanted okay. to talk to you about. So yeah. the first one is, I feel I was born an addict, and no matter what happened, I would have gone down that path. Well, certain gen- so this is an illness with a genetic basis. Okay. I, I've treated 10,000 addicts in my career, and only five could I not have seen clearly the genetic heritage, the family history. It's always there. Okay. Um, now, but there are varying genetic burdens, right? Not everyone has the same genetic burden. Some people need an environmental trigger, whether it's exposure or trauma or whatever it is. There's, there's something that triggers it. Um, and, you know, when people get it, severe addiction, bad enough they need to see me, it's because they have two problems. They have trauma and they have addiction, and so we have to manage both. Oh, he, he had some trauma, right? His dad was shot and all this horrible stuff. His uncle was shot. I mean, he'd been through trauma, and he developed his addiction right after that. But his sense was, you know, I was already going that way. And, and yeah, he probably I was going that way no matter yeah. what. I so was like, it oh, has oh, it, gosh. The, the important thing, though, is it, it's an illicit, you know, it's— I don't know if you want to get into this conversation, but but I um, want to get into all the conversations. Okay, let, let me. I don't know if you want to get into this conversation. <laughs> it, it's but because it, it's it's something I was sort of lecturing about. <laughs> People get in these arguments still these days about whether addiction is a disease or not, and yet every time I get into that conversation, not one person who I've had that conversation with had a definition for disease. You can't tell whether something is or is not something that you don't have a definition for. So. Here is what disease is. Disease is a complex relationship between the genetics of the substrate and the environment. The gene-environment interaction results in an abnormal biology. People like me call that pathophysiology. And then, Doc, would you call obesity a disease under that pretense? Because I've often been like, because to me, my concern with it, and not to go so far off piece, but I can't help but acknowledge what you're saying, is that if I tell somebody they've got a disease, they're like, well, I'm fucked, I need drugs, I have a disease. And it's like, no, you know, but this... Okay, so to me. so the the only it's a great thought. So the only discussion that is that is rational, let, let's let's put it in the category of addiction for a second. Is is it a disease or it is a syndrome? I would argue that obesity is a syndrome. So it's caused by multiple genetic variables and multiple environmental influences. Okay. So it's a syndrome like hypertension is a syndrome. Hypertension What's the is definition a of a syndrome, though? Does that, is a syndrome different than a disease syndrome, in that I don't need drugs for? It, you don't need drugs for any of these things, to be fair. I mean, you don't, you know, for a cold is a disease, but you don't need a, you know, we, we over pharmaco- pharmacology everything, trust me. I and I, I was raised by. Being it real with Jillian Mike. Michael.